What's up you guys, it's Ashling. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic New Year's so far. So weird, Christmas kind of came and went. It's the 4th of January. I just started back to work today. I have a couple of hours free in between calls and stuff like that going on today. So I said I would sit down and film my favorite drugstore products of 2020. I also want to do my high-end favorites, uh, miscellaneous favorites and a missus video. So... <laughs> I hope I can get all these done. It's just there's a lot going on with work and stuff. Obviously been back and I hope I can get these all done in the first week of January. If not, they'll be coming up maybe second week of January. I have so many videos planned that I still need to do. Like Patty and I had a Q and A video that we want to do together. That didn't happen in December because I had a lot of stuff going on. I was in the hospital, as you guys know if you watch my vlog. Stress levels were through the roof. My anxiety was so bad and I haven't had an anxiety attack or anything anxiety related in about three years. So it was pretty bad. I had such a nice break from work, working full time. I was finished that on the 24th of December and I didn't go back to work till obviously today. I kind of clocked in one or two days just to kind of like check emails and see if there's anything going on. And then with YouTube, I just took a complete another break, I think, from Christmas Eve onwards. And I really needed it. And I feel so much more refreshed, even though I feel absolutely exhausted today. I don't know why, but I'm just feeling really tired. But I feel really refreshed and emotionally motivated and ready for the new year. I hope you guys had somewhat of a Christmas. I know an awful lot of people were in lockdown. Ireland's lockdown is going on to the 31st of January. And I'd say... It'll it's gonna go continue on for longer. Cases are just outrageous here in Ireland. Like it's so bad. It's just a horrible situation. But anyway, I hope that you guys are well and you're keeping really safe. And I think that's my only New Year's message that I wanna say. Just look after yourselves, keep safe, look after each other and just stay at home as much as possible. Anyway, let's start off with my favorite drugstore products of 2020. So because three quarters of the year was spent in lockdown, I don't have a whole lot of favorites, but I do have new products that I wanna to talk to you guys about. So I'm just gonna be talking about makeup products in this video, and I'm gonna do face, eyes, and lips. We're gonna start off with the first face product, which is a primer. This is from e.l.f. It's the Poreless Putty Primer And I think I picked this up maybe in March. It looks like that on the inside. Just what I'm looking for at the moment It's quite hydrating. I've definitely mentioned this a few times, but my skin type has changed from oily to quite dry It's not as dry as it was, but when I initially first got pregnant I felt like my skin just went through a whole dramatic change for about three months I was just so dry. It was just a whole 180. I'd never experienced something like that with my skin, the dryness on my skin, and it just felt like so taut and dry. So my skincare routine definitely had to change a little bit. I really liked the Poreless Putty Primer, and I'm still using it now to this day. I just really, really, really like it. I did find another primer that's a little bit more expensive that I've been enjoying a bit more, but I will talk about that one in my high-end favorites. However, this was a great purchase and it's a really, really nice primer. It fills in my pores. It is seamless on the skin. It's really lightweight and my foundation sits on top of it really, really well. I love it. The other product I wanna talk about for base I have mentioned this before and I definitely mentioned it in my 2019 products but I can't not mention it because I feel like it was the standout <laughs> product of 2020 for me as well and that is the Catrice Tensational. I know so many of you guys have picked this up on my recommendation and I hope you love it as much as I do. I just feel like it's such a great primer. It makes my skin look amazing. Catrice sent me out like backups of these this year so I'm really appreciative of that. And I just love the way it looks on my skin. It has this kind of slight tint to it. It's not completely clear. It's not completely undetectable on the skin. The color that it is, I can wear it alone. And it just gives me this kind of glow to my skin. It makes my skin look really fresh and radiant. And I absolutely love it. And like I said, when I had a little bit more oilier skin, I was loving it. I was kind of worried that my skin had gotten drier. But it's hydrating. It's just a really great primer. And it's so luxurious. Like it feels more expensive than it actually is. I think this retails for about six euro, maybe five or six euro. So inexpensive. Definitely pick it up if you haven't already. I really highly recommend that. It's one of my favorite products 
of 2019 and 2020. Like I just love it so much. I 1 million percent recommended or talked about the Dream Urban cover from Maybelline in a video this year. I have to have mentioned this. I'm in the shade 126 which is nude beige. It's perfect for me. Now in the winter time, in the summertime, I picked up a darker shade, but went through that the whole summer. It is one of the most amazing products. It's described as a full coverage, lightweight, protective makeup. It's not actually described as a foundation. I would describe this as like a BB cream or something like a cosmetic CC cream. It's so similar to that. I actually feel like they're so comparable. The CC cream from it is just a little bit thicker than this. It's more of a watery consistency. It is such an amazing product. It gives you like a light coverage to the skin. It just looks like your skin only better. I love the fact that it is so inexpensive as well. And I also love how lightweight it is on the skin. Like I use this on my no makeup makeup days. And because it has an SPF 50, it was great during the summertime. Even, oh look, here comes the sun. Because I could wear this on days like we went to the beach some days, like just for walks and stuff. And the sun was really, really glary. And I knew I would have gotten like burnt on my face or burnt over my nose. Or if I was sitting in the back garden, like I got a great tan earlier in the year, like around May. And I was still wearing this like on days where I wanted to, like to wear a little bit of coverage on my skin and I was out and about if that makes sense so like maybe well I don't like we went to foot golf one day and I think I wore it to that because I knew we were outside all day and I just wanted a little bit of makeup with a lot of coverage it was it's a great product I can't recommend it enough that foundation is the second one I purchased this year obviously I had a darker one during the summer and it's lasted so long and it's just a it's a really great product if you haven't tried it definitely give it a go and like I said from the tr change from the like oilier skin to drier skin, it works fine. The other foundation product I was really enjoying earlier in this year, but I kind of like forgot about it, I'd say from maybe August onwards, but I was loving this really early on in the year and it is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. This is the, the stick foundation. It is just called Stick Foundation Photo Focus. This one here is in cream beige. I feel like I have warm beige as well and that's the one that I've been using the most of, but I just found this a really handy, easy, quick foundation product. Again, I think, with the gear that was in it. So I wasn't going to any nightclubs. I wasn't going to any bars. I had been to a few restaurants with friends and Patty and I had like our anniversary and dates and stuff, but I was really not bothered with makeup this year because I don't think I wore foundation for longer than maybe like four hours in a particular day. Like there was nowhere that I needed, you know, a full face of makeup for a long period of time. These were really great for like quick applications. I haven't been to the cinema since March, but this is kind of like a cinema foundation. And it's kind of what I would say, like quick, easy, snappy, foundation routine this is kind of your go-to guy. The next product is the Revolution Conceal and Define Infinite Long Wear Concealer. I have the dark shade here because I've gone through the whole light shade like I loved this concealer so much. I think I tried this out maybe in February. I think I have a whole video dedicated to it and I did compare it to the Conceal and Define the original as well. I really really like this concealer so like I said I have the dark one. This is in C14. It's even too dark right now. I used it during the summer for like cream contouring and stuff like that. It is such an amazing concealer and for the price actually do you know what I'm because I'm running out of another concealer that I'm going to talk about next. I think I'm actually going to pick up a backup of this because I just really 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 want it right now even thinking about it. I ran out of this definitely around August, maybe even July, so in the middle of the year and I just had other concealers that I was just using because they were in my collection. That's another thing that I really discovered that I did a lot more of this year was actually use up products, you know, instead of like opening, you know, four different concealers at the one time. I just found it was so wasteful and I was on a complete and utter makeup spending ban this year for no like other reason than I wasn't needing anything new because where was I going I wasn't like showing off new makeup and I wasn't testing out makeup as much this was the concealer I really loved this year and I highly recommend it if you want something full coverage that's not cakey doesn't crease and just kind of covers up your under eye area especially if you're like me I'm not sleeping well at all lately I, I don't think I've slept well in about three weeks so I feel like my under eye area is definitely in need of something a little bit more high coverage so I'm going to pick this up but I do want to talk about another concealer that I have loved in 2020. Now, <laughs> I'm going to be eating my words whilst I say this next sentence. I do find myself going back and forth between concealers. I find that they're one of the hardest things for me to find, 
like my dream concealer. I have still yet to find that one holy grail concealer that I can say is my, you know, my favorite concealer of all time. But I did try out a good few concealers this year and this one is one of them that I tried out last year and hated. I tried this out at the end of 2019. I want to say like around November time. And it was just sitting in my drawer and like I said, I ran out of that other Revolution one. I had no other concealers kind of on the go. I had this in my collection. It was like probably my last concealer that I had other than one other one. And um, I just was using it. And I really, really, really like this concealer. I have no idea why I didn't like it before. I feel like I thought it was too cakey or it was too heavy underneath my eyes. I can't really remember. But since using it again this year, I've fallen in love with it and I think it is a fantastic concealer. So I've only been really using this concealer since like around August time. So for the latter half of 2020, but I really, really love it. So between those two concealers, the Revolution one and this one, they are holy grail standards. Like I said, I'm not like saying that they're my favorite, favorite concealers, but I really want to repurchase both of them, if that makes any sense. The only other concealer I ever remember feeling that way about was the Tarte Shape Tape or the Collection Concealer. I do like my Catrice one, but I find it very, very watery and it's great for like no makeup maker days, but my eyes are just looking really, really tired lately and that's just not cutting the mustard. This next product I have a feeling is discontinued because every single time I use it and I go to try and find a link for it for you guys online, it is like nowhere to be seen. But I'm gonna talk about it anyway, just in case you can get your hands on it or you do see it at a NYX counter. It is the NYX Highlight and Contour Cream Pro Palette. At some stage in this year, I can't even remember when, I did the following JLo's Makeup Artist foundation routine, makeup routine. He did a whole video with Tati and he used cream products. And it kind of made me reach for cream products a lot more this year. I feel like as well they're quite lightweight and with the, the foundation situation just not wanting to be wearing too much. I felt that this was another way of adding kind of dimension to my face and colour to my face. So I absolutely love this. There is four dark shades and four light shades. There is a shimmer shade here on the end which I do not like. Never use it. I'm just not into it. But the other shades are great. So I use them like underneath my brows. I use them to cream contour with. I just I really, really like this cream contour product and I have given it an awful lot of love this year. I've used it quite a lot. It is expensive for a drugstore product because you would think this would be in around the 10, 11 euro mark, but I think it's up around 20 euro. However, I have been using it all year long. Or, <laughs> I have been using this all year long and I haven't reached pan on any of them. So it is a long lasting product. That and I found it looked really nice on my skin. It was really easy to use, really lightweight and I found it really blendable into the skin. It kind of melted into the skin. So I really think it is a great product. I just wish I could find a link for it for you guys or if I knew if it was discontinued or not. But if you do see it at a NYX counter, definitely pick it up. I don't think I bought one single blush this entire year, but I did have a lot of my collection that I haven't really used. I remember doing a full face of L'Oreal maybe around June 2019, like a really long time ago. And this was sent to me in Pure. And I kind of use it in that video, but kind of threw it aside afterwards. I don't mean to say like I've just disregard my makeup. You know the way you might have other products that you're trying to get through or other things kind of tickle your fancy. I just forgot about this. And this is the Life's a Peach blush from L'Oreal. And I just really, really, really like this. I use this quite a lot during the summer. I think there was like no days where I didn't wear this. I wore this every single time I wore makeup. It's just a gorgeous color. I hope you can see it there. It's a really hard color to probably see. But that's why I like it because it's so subtle on the cheeks, but it gives that gorgeous like radiance to the cheeks. It's not matte, but it's not shimmery. It has like a sheen to it. So it gives your cheeks like that real like youthful kind of plump look without being too much in your face. Really liked this and I highly recommend it for longevity and like I said, I've been using it quite a lot this year and there's not a hope I'm ever gonna touch pan on it. Like it's, there's so much product in it. Again, this product might be super hard to get hold of, but I know it's a limited edition product that comes back into Aldi stores quite a lot and this is for the Lecura. This is their loose trans, trans setting translucent powder. 
This is supposed to be a dupe for the Laura Mercier and to be honest I haven't even bought another Laura Mercier since using this and my Laura Mercier is gone since midsummer. I got this in November 2019 so I had it quite a while and I've just really kind of loved it more this year because I was using so many cream products. I wanted something translucent obviously to set them on my skin. I went away to Kilkenny and I forgot this when I was away in Kilkenny. We went away in the middle of the summer for our anniversary and I had like another powder that was in my bag and I was like, no, I need that Aldi powder. Like it's so good. Like it is actually so good. I think my makeup just looked atrocious for like three days because I just I loved this as a setting powder and it just kind of adds like almost like a veil onto the skin I have it on today I just feel like it really sets the skin and it just makes it look really nice but it's not like overly powdery or doesn't make your makeup look cakey or anything like that I really 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 like this powder there's nothing that compares to this especially for the price it was around four or five euro from Aldi so like I said keep an eye out for the Aldi brochures every now and again they release makeup products it's usually in the summertime or again like I purchased this in November last year or November like 2019 and I think it had come out already earlier that year so just do keep an eye on the Aldi's and on the magazines and stuff they'll tell you when this is coming out I actually tweeted Aldi to find out when that was coming out because I had heard great things about it and that it was a dupe and when I picked it up I was like oh my god it's so good because I just wanted to do a whole Aldi makeup look for you oh, guys. I just want to talk about eyes and there's one kind of standout eyeshadow palette that I think of from 2020 and I think you guys probably know if you've been watching me all year if you're not then I'll tell you what it is. The next gen nudes eyeshadow palette from Catrice. And I was so afraid when they released these that they were gonna be like a discontinued product within like a week. Catrice bring out such great products. You fall in love with something and the next thing your color is discontinued or the a whole product itself is discontinued and your devo.com and it happens so regularly. But this has been out since I wanna say February maybe? The day I tried it I was like so in love with this. It was an eyeshadow palette with 14 shades in it. I'll give you a little quick swatch of some of them. I've had a love-hate relationship with eyeshadows from Catrice in the past. Mostly for their powderiness, that they don't last very long on the skin and that they're very difficult to blend and end up looking like a blotchy mess. That's the only issues I've ever had, which is kind of like every issue you can have in an eyeshadow palette. But I've had several issues with eyeshadows from Catrice in the past. And this palette, I can tell you, has never given me a day's bother, ever. I remember when I first got this eyeshadow palette, I was wearing and using it obsessively. I loved it so much. And the shades are just gorgeous in it. If you do see it at a Catrice counter, definitely pick it up. I think it's around 11 euro, so it's not like really, really cheap, but the quality is worth it. And I just love the shades in it. It kind of reminds me of the Nude palette from Huda Beauty, I think that's what it's called. However, for a more affordable kind of same vibe eyeshadow palette this is definitely recommended I really liked this I think Catrice blew it out of the park this year in general with their makeup products they brought out so many great makeup products earlier in the year they brought out new concealers new foundations those new products but the other thing they did bring out that I really really love is the lashes to kill sexy volume mascara this is my third one of them this year I love this mascara it's really great the only issue I have with it only issue but it's like three euro is that it dries up so quickly and if I hadn't so many other mascaras on the go this year I probably would be really annoyed that it like I'd run out of mascara and was like buying it over and over and over. It just, it dries out within like a month, I would say. And I know you should be replacing your mascaras probably around, in around that time anyway. But it's just that there was still product left in it and it was just had completely dried up. Like this one's a little bit dry and there's no point in repurchasing it because I have another mascara on the go that I'm using at the moment. But it is such a great mascara. I really, 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 really love it. And like I said, it's very inexpensive. The other mascara I really loved this year was the Maybelline the False Lash Effect Mascara. This has a really nice big wand on it and I just feel like this got right down to the root and separated my lashes. It just made them look super long and I'm not really one to pick up Maybelline mascaras. I used to love them back in the day but I just don't pick them up at all anymore. This was sent to me in Pure and I totally fell in love with it. I, any product I actually got from Maybelline this year was an absolute gem of a product and I must say their quality has improved. If anybody has tried Maybelline in recent times let me know what you think but I actually think that their products 
and the quality and the things that they're coming out with are definitely an improvement. And I really, really liked this mascara. It was just really lengthening, voluming, voluming, volumizing, and it didn't make my lashes go crispy or like flake off or anything like that. And it has a very similar one to the Better Than Sex mascara from Too Faced, but I don't like that mascara formulation at all. It just like flakes down my face. It's just not cute at all. The next product from Catrice I want to talk about is the Brush Ink Tattoo Liner. Guys, I am so obsessed with this. You will know that. This is like my third repurchase of this this year. I have thrown away every single liquid liner I think I own and this is the only one I use. I used to be obsessed with the Essence Liquid Ink Liner that came in the like little bottle. It was much more of a wet formula and then it had like a brush. Loved that for so long but this one's even better because the brush is attached to it. Normally I don't really like products like this because I find that they dry out a lot and I just find them really hard to, to use. They skip on the eye and they're not as black as I want them to. But this is so much better than any product I've ever used before and it's a fraction of the price of anything I've used before with the same kind of technique. I used to use the KVD Vegan Beauty Tattoo Liner and the, I liked that but I found it kind of like more of a charcoal shade whereas this is like a deep black it's so black and intense and I really 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 like this very easy to use especially if you're a newbie with eyeliner and you're just kind of getting used to using a lot an eyeliner I know can be tricky enough as it is because I always mess up my wings always but this makes it so much easier uh, it just makes the application easier and it glides over the eye it's just such a great product the last two eye products i want to talk about are both from my brows i got my brows laminated in i want to say september or october early october and since then i've just been maintaining kind of like the bushy brow i got them done again in december i just really like that technique on the brows i just feel like it's effortless it looks quite nice and it looks I don't know, very natural, if you can have naturally looking laminated brows. But anyway, these are the products I've been using to kind of maintain my laminated brows. They're both what's in my eyebrows today. The first one is from Revolution. They came out with this XX Revolution brand. I didn't really pass any remarks on the release of that brand or the launch of it or it's like a separate entity of Revolution. I'm not really sure what the deal is with it. It's very similar in price point and the products seem to be, in my opinion, a little bit more on the kind of higher end quality wise. Because I have tried a lot of brow products from Revolution and haven't liked any as much as this one. So this is the XX Fine Brow and it just comes with two ends, like a spoolie on one end and then the product on the other. Quite a heavy product as well and it was only eight euro. I got this in Boots but you can buy it on Beauty Bay. I'm actually going to buy a backup of this as well along with the concealer because this is nearly out and it's my favourite brow product ever. I just you know trace through my brows with it it's really easy to feather through your brows it's quite a long lasting product I always liked the Catrice one but I found that it wasted quite quickly and I found that it didn't last in my brows as long as I would like it to whereas this does now the shade I can't remember but I think it's medium brown I'm nearly 100% certain that's what it is but it's such a great product and I just really like the price point and just how it makes my brows look and then to set it in place, I use the Plump and Set Brow Artiste. I like this because it doesn't make my eyebrows stiff. I love my Benefit Brow Gel, don't get me wrong, but I find it quite expensive. And also it can make my eyebrows a bit stiff and kind of like almost stuck to my face and hard. And I can feel them like being hard on my face. Whereas this doesn't, it just sets everything in place, stops it from moving, but keeps kind of the natural hair in place, if that makes sense. So it looks like hair, it's not like stuck to my actual face. I hope I'm making sense saying that. This is a really great product. It was sent to me in Pure and again I just kind of had run out of the benefit one and just picked it up because I'm trying to use up what I already have instead of buying things that I don't need and I was really pleasantly surprised with this and it's a really great brow product and I highly recommend it if you want a brow like setter. <laughs> I think that's what you would say it's called. It's a really great product. So finally, I just want to talk about lips really quickly. I didn't really try very many lip glosses. I got a couple sent to me in Pure and I gave a lot of them away to my cousins and stuff like that because again, I'm not wearing that many lip glosses. I had the Fenty Beauty Glossy Balm, which I really liked and that's what I was using throughout most of the year. But I did really, really like the e.l.f. 
plumping gloss. A lot of people don't like these plumping glosses because they are quite tingly on the lips and they feel like they're almost burning whereas I don't feel like this one does that and it still gives the same plumping effect to the lips. I really 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 liked this. It's called Peach Bellini and it's just like a nude shade. It went with everything. I applied this a lot in the summer. Again, if I just wanted my lips to look a little bit fuller, I just filled them in with lip liner and then just put this on my lips and I was good to go. Minimal makeup was definitely the makeup of 2020, I feel, because again, people were just not bothered. They weren't going anywhere. So what was the point? And if you did want to kind of like do yourself up, you were sticking to something minimal. And a lip gloss, <laughs> you can't get much more minimal than that. The next three products are from the same brand. I know this brand's kind of controversial. A lot of people like don't like Morphe and I can understand, but I got Morphe products way at the beginning of lockdown. And they were the only products I kind of picked up from Morphe. The only products I actually bought nearly this year. And I just, I really ended up loving all of them. One of them I had was sent to me from or in pure a long time ago like it's in old packaging and that is the liquid lipstick in the color virgin i've wore this quite a lot i can't actually wear it currently because my lips are just everything is just too dry and it's just too dry to be wearing a liquid lip to be fair but the shade of this is so pretty i just love it and i was wearing it a lot before i was pregnant and a lot of you guys were really admiring it and anytime i wore it in a vlog a lot of people would ask what it was and it lasts really really long it is drying like it's obviously a liquid lipstick like it's gonna dry on your lips it's not flaky or anything like that but it is a dry product so i would definitely recommend exfoliating lots and making sure that your lips are really hydrated before using any liquid lipstick it is just not something i can wear right now i need something with a bit more moisture in it almost like a balm because like I said my lips are just so dry and I've been using everything under the sun to try and fix the dryness I just feel like it's the winter hormones I'm not really sure what it is but it's, they're driving me mad that they're so dry but it is what it is but this is a really great liquid lipstick but the other two products that I've been really liking is the lip liner in sweet tea this is like a raved about product it's a very long lasting lip liner I will say that much for it and that's the color of it there. It's quite dark. I would say if you have a lighter complexion and you're looking for a nude lip, this is a little bit too deep. If you have medium to deep skin, I think it would look re like it looks really great. I would say like a mixture between Spice and Strip Down from MAC. It's just a really nice lip liner. And then the lipstick that I got is quite nude and this is in Bear It All and I absolutely love this. I've used this so much this year it's all jacked up and it's like falling apart i really 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 like this lipstick it's almost like the same shade as the virgin liquid lipstick but obviously it's a little bit more hydrating it's a tiny bit paler it's more of a pink undertone it's a very affordable lipstick i think the lip liner as well is only like five euros while well. they're really really inexpensive but i quite like the morphe lip products that i picked up this year so guys i hope you enjoyed my drugstore or affordable favorites of 2020 there was a lot less products this year so I do feel like this year I just wasn't inspired or I wasn't bothered buying that much makeup or trying out that much makeup I don't know if you felt the same way but I just was very happy with what I did get and what I've been using and definitely using up products has been my mantra for 2020 and I'm going to continue it on this year because I, I don't need that much I'm trying to declutter now with the baby coming I need to obviously make room I don't want to have like extra things that are just cluttering up my life I want to have everything as minimal as possible and you know babies come with an awful lot of stuff so I want to make sure that my stuff is minimal and stuff that I actually really like. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to go on and fill in my high-end favorites of 2020. So that video will be coming up very, very soon. Just keep an eye out for it. Thank you so much for all of your support throughout 2020. And I am really excited for 2021. I hope you guys are too. And I'm excited to spend it with you all again and do it all again this year. I love you guys so much and I'll talk to you very soon. Mwah.